I feel like I've been dragging my heels with my recent Necromunda projects. So this week, I'm gonna challenge myself and see if I can make my top priority building and painting my gang of cultist misfits. And to further motivate me, I think I'm gonna try a style that has forever intimidated me. And if it's going to work, I'll need some company. So join me as we explore the violence and anarchy that is this tabletop skirmish game. First up, a recap. Myself and three mates have decided that we will start a Necromunda campaign. And Necromunda is a tabletop skirmish game set in the universe of Warhammer 40,000. But rather than hand-picked elite super soldiers, instead these are gangs operating in a hive city on a single planet. In a recent video, I painted up a House Goliath gang for Dave, and I would best describe them as genetically engineered brutes that work in the industrial depths of the city. I put a lot of effort into them, but the paint style was more my traditional method of painting that I'm comfortable with. Since then, Gordo has built and painted his Ash Waste Nomads gang, and the feel that I get from these is that it's a group living off the land, like the Fremen in June. But beyond simply being harsh conditions, the Necromunda outskirts is a wasteland of debris and chemical hazards. Dave's colour theme was red, Gordon's was green, Sam will be painting a Van Sar gang, but he hasn't locked in a colour yet, so I'm thinking I might tie down blue as my option. See, my cultists are going to have a fire theme, and if red's already taken, I think blue's my next best option. And I'll want a painting style that is different to the other guys, but I'm getting ahead of myself. I'll start building the models, and while I do this, I'll tell you a little about the background of this gang. Whilst we explore their story, this might give me some painting ideas. One of the large benefits with playing in a game system like Necromunda is that you can purchase one box of models and it will contain everything your gang needs to start playing games. I found Warhammer to be expensive and intimidating to get into because if your mate is talking you into the goal of playing 2000 point games with them, there's a lot of money and that's a lot of models. So kicking off with a smaller game like Necromunda, Infinity, Mercs, Mordheim or Blood Bowl can let you get into gaming quicker and help you to discover if the hobby is for you before you overcommit. I have no doubt that plenty of people that would enjoy the hobby find themselves overwhelmed and burnt out early on. And that's where we see those online marketplace sales of 20 boxes of models, paints and rulebooks. And after talking a big game about how one box has everything you need to make your game, here I am breaking open two boxes to build mine. The reason being that this particular gang has the ability where you can use Cordor gang members and Redemptionists. So I thought I'd treat myself to having some fanatical priests that are followed by their cultist gang members. The Cult of the Redemption and House Cordor are religious nutjobs. They are arguably the largest of the clan houses, and it's no surprise when they are built on the same founding principles of the faith in the God Emperor of Mankind. The same beliefs that mankind have in the 41st millennium in this setting that is spread through the galaxy with wars fought over by Imperial super soldiers like Space Marines. Yeah, these goons in the Underhive are recruiting followers off the same xenophobic ideology. In a game so colourful and entertaining, why on earth have I selected to play as a cult? There's a few reasons why I've picked them, but the main one is their playstyle. Sam will have the tech advanced and elite Vansar gang, Dave has the close combat brutes being the Goliaths, Gordo has the crafty and resourceful gang that require finesse being the Ashways Nomads, so, I figured that what was lacking were expendable psychos fascinated with fire. Having such different playstyles should help to create really entertaining games where we need to adapt our tactics for one another. With the models built and primed in white, I can now turn my mind to the painting. I picture myself painting my gang in the same style that I painted Dave's, which also matches Gordon's style. We're talking base coats, washes for shadows, highlights, and then weathering. 
I instinctively lean towards them being uniformed because that's what we're used to seeing when we flick through a White Dwarf magazine. But since I've been able to share this hobby with so many amazing people in our Discord community, it encourages me to try out new styles and to step outside of my comfort zone. So to offer you something different from me on the channel, I'll be painting the gang as if they've just stepped off the page of a graphic novel. Colours are tricky, and I burn a bit of time just looking at the paint rack on the wall. House Cordal bolster their numbers by targeting those in poverty and with a shady background. Beggars and criminals. They aren't front page superheroes, and instead I see my gang as background goons and henchmen. So for these reasons, I think they should have lots of dirty drab colours like browns, bones and olive greens. I think the majority of their clothing should just be whatever they can actually get their hands on. Identity in a gang is important today, and nothing has changed so many thousands of years in the future. Blue will be their gang colour, and even the brand new bone picker Jews, newly initiated into the gang, are still afforded some blue fabric to denote them as house corridor, and importantly, to offer them a physical representation of belonging to something. The Redemptionists, not to be confused with the gang of a similar name, the Receptionists. Cordor Gang. Ah, you're after a brethren bone scorcher. Please wait while I connect you. To the end of my blade. The Redemptionist Priest will have a lot more colour going on. Long flowing bright blue robes signify their standing within the gang, but probably no gold. I don't picture my gang having any level of wealth like this. Half of them are sporting bowl cuts, so if they can't afford to rock a slick fade, don't tell me they have golden trim on their armour. Ah, and you may have noticed that each model is wearing a mask of some sort. The newer members conceal their identity with fabric, whereas the leaders have more advanced cows and metal cages. This wasn't me picking out the easy to paint options, but instead their design as the law describes their religion, forbidding them from showing their face. Cordor Law. Core Law, if you will. And now, a short snappy intermission to let you know that this video is sponsored by you. That's right. Thank you so much to everyone that has been using my affiliate links that are down in the video description when you're purchasing your models, paints, and hobby supplies from your favorite stores. There are stores around the world that you already use, like Whalen Games, Miniature Market, and Gap Games, or Rosemary & Co for your brushes. There's no extra cost to you, and these businesses send a slice of the sale across to this channel, and that means thanks to you, I can continue my passion of painting toys and creating these videos for you. So from me to you, thanks. Batch painting models can really test your resolve. Having one color on your wet palette and following that assembly line process of pick one model up, paint that color, pick up another model, that can be tough. My advice is if you are starting out, then restrict yourself to batch painting only five to 10 models to begin with. You will still save boatloads of time overall, and you should be able to notice enough frequent progress that you don't lose interest in what you're working on. If I find that I'm getting frustrated because these models have been on my hobby desk for what feels like an eternity, then often I'll grab one model and paint it until completion. Having that little win can often be the morale boost that I need and the motivation to finish the rest of the squad. Painting in this cell shaded comic book style means that the models can be looking very average for the majority of the process. These in particular are ugly and depressing base colours and it's not until now where I break out the black lining that the models really take form and come to life. I'm slowly tracing my way around all of the details on the clothing, robes, weapons and armour. I haven't been able to weather the models with my usual colouring tricks, so instead today I'm going to be adding some hash marks to the clothing to show how old and worn they are. With the models completed, I can now paint the bases, and here's an opportunity for me to bring some brighter colours in. I mentioned that I wanted drab coloured clothing to represent the gang's conditions, so maybe the bases can be what reminds us of the fun futuristic setting they are operating in. I don't want to introduce completely new colours, so blue will be the standout, but this time brighter and more vibrant as a turquoise. 
The greys can be a shade or two lighter from what we have seen on the metallic areas of the model, and the 3D printed nameplates can be a great excuse for a bright yellow, as I crudely create a non-metallic gold by shifting from browns. And now that we are onto the subject of nameplates, how about I introduce you to my Necromunda gang, and then afterwards we can discover what is still to come on the channel this year, including a huge giveaway in December. But first, please, take this brochure and read about all of the benefits and enlightenment that you'll receive when you join our team, definitely not a cult, named Holy Smokes. The gang is led by our priest named Father Padre, who is also known as Two Dads, and he wields an axe which doubles as a flamethrower so that he can free up one hand to wield a religious text. Supporting him is Tobias the Unstable, which is a fitting name for a man in possession of an explosive firing crossbow. What could possibly go wrong? Bob the Faithful is our long range sniper, and I'm confident that his faith can reach you from across the board. Faith is the name of his rifle. Our gang leader is a redemptionist, and these two make up our three total. Jebediah Grimlow and Shady Gisburn continue our theme of obnoxious weaponry with a grenade launcher and a flamethrower. However, if you want to cause a scene on a limited budget, be like Pasty Swindler and Filthy Scrapshank, who have an affordable, humble flamer on the end of a stick. At this point, I hope Gordon, Dave, and Sam are watching, and they're terrified. Finally, we have two bone pickers, who are the rookies, the initiates. We have Eli Candlestab, and my personal favorite member in the gang, Dave from HR. That's right, poor Dave here works in human resourcing department for the gang, and after a wild night out on the town with some of the lads, he wakes to find himself heading out on a mission. Will Dave from HR have what it takes to survive? Almost certainly not. But we aren't done yet. Every second month in our Discord, we host a friendly painting competition where the winner is chosen at random and I paint for them a model of their choosing. You may have already seen some of these videos up on the channel under the VIP Painting Commission series. Well, in December, we are celebrating the end of the competition's first year by rallying together with a whole host of the channel sponsors to create one amazing care package for the lucky winner. And in there will be different prizes, including a whole host of models from Proxy Wargaming, a starter paint set of wet palette from The Army Painter, an airbrush from Gallery, a selection of brushes from Rosemary & Co, and a beautiful bespoke dice tray from The Tray Tinker. And of course, a model of your choosing painted by me. The details for our Discord will be down in the video description and also pinned in the comments. So if that sounds like the sort of friendly competition and amazing community that you'd like to be a part of, click the link and come introduce yourself. Until then, I've been Mike and these incredible people have been the channel patrons and they haven't realized it yet, but my ultimate goal is to assemble them all into one location hand out a bunch of rusty hand flamers and convince them to drink the Kool-Aid. Then, and only then, can we ascend through the spire and start to reclaim everything once and for- Oh hey, nah, I was just, I was just joking around. You should totally finish that Kool-Aid though. Thanks, see you on the next one.